So uh, focal treatment is not um, is not something that is universally, uh, I would say, uh, accepted because there are, I think, different ways to treat uh, retinoblastoma with laser or, or with cryo. So, so just. If I refer to the anti-tumor effect of laser, I would distinguish you know, the coagulation of the tumor directly, uh, where you have you reach temperature over 70 degrees centigrade and you denature proteins. And you can get you know, reach this effect either by transfer of diode laser of smaller peripheral tumors uh, with a diopexy uh, device. Or you can do it transcapillary with a uh, with art, for example, out of uh, 532 uh, procedure. Or yeah. No, no. You can use transcapillary diode. Also, you can also use transcapillary diode. Yeah. But, uh, okay, yeah, absolutely. But I, for the small peripheral, I use the transferral uh, device. Okay. Um, you can also coagulate the vessels of the tumor to uh, create a ischemia or a hypoxia of the tumor and so to occlude the vessels. So it's very efficient with the art with the art and wavelengths. And on the other hand, you can uh, uh, um, take advantage of the other uh, anti-tumor effect of laser. It's just heating the tumor, so hypothermia where you reach 45-55 degrees centigrade. You don't denature the proteins, so you don't see much when you do the treatments. Sometimes you see the petechia or you know some, <coughs> some but usually you don't observe anything at, at the time of the treatment. Uh, and you can do it uh, uh, with a transcapillary diode alone or in synergy with a with carboplatin in the carbolaser variant, the chemo term variant. So typically, the, my, my parameters for diet mediated hypertrophia is I use spots of 500 to 80 microns, usually 80, 800 microns. So you need a special device to uh, uh, have this spot size which is mounted on the operating microscope. It's extremely, extremely uh, uh, friendly use, user because you, you have a stick, you have a, a joystick and you can direct and focus your beam and uh, it's, you, you're quiet and you, you don't afraid of moving your head or whatever. It's <coughs> perform a hypertrophia, I think, honestly, you know, I've seen many, many colleagues trying or uh, initiating to do hypertermia with the indirect and most of them stop because they, they, they really are damaging the iris usually sometimes you don't see any iris left and uh, <coughs> plus it's not the true hypertermia because you cannot stay, you will see 15 minutes per spot, you have a big tumor, you have three spots so it's 45 minutes, it's very boring for the surgeon but it's the way you do it. We don't have a bigger spot than it has. Yes, we, we can go up to 2,000. But I don't use 2,000. I use usually... I, I, I put the, the spots I use most, the most. Mm -hmm. Then the duration is up to 15, something 20 minutes. But to cover the whole tumor surface, you sometimes need two, three spots. So it's a long time. How can you manage to stay like this for 45 minutes? I don't, I don't understand. But uh, the, the reality is that the people who've tried that, they, they stopped. They, they just abandoned. And the power, you know, the power is higher than what is in the literature. I go to the maximum power sometimes. Especially if the tumor is thick, there's no pigment behind, there's little uptake only. And so uh, this is my permanent. It's very different from the parameters we use for uh, photocoagulation with the urban wavelengths. Very small, 50 to, to 100 micron spots. Uh, the power, the duration is, is very short. It's what I use with, in particular to close the vessels, when I, I occlude the feeding vessels on the, on the tumor, not around the tumor, on the tumor. And the power
power, you know, it depends. I start with a low power and just I, I go up. But then I will hear the comments of uh, uh, Brenda. Maybe it's, it's time to do that now, Brenda, because you certainly use other programs. Yeah. No, we, we just use, actually, we would not go so high. The, the, the duration would be um, uh, less. No, the duration would be longer, maybe. And Sometimes the power less. less. And the power less, maybe. But, but, but we still yeah. vary them. And we always, as you say, start, okay. start I, until we escalate. Yeah. Ask, until yeah. we, if we see no effect, then we yeah. escalate up until we see an effect. Yeah. Actually, I learned to do that with my coats disease, yes. you know, because I want to occlude the vessels, even if the retina is detached. And so it's how I know, uh, I learned, you know, uh, to, to, to really destroy these vessels, because you don't want them to, to reopen. I do not, we do not treat vessels. Okay. We treat, except that when you have a small tumor in the first treatment, a small tumor, you would surround the, in the tree, in the retina around it to cut off all its retinal mm -hmm. blood, in the retinal blood supply. Um, pay no attention to the big vessels and don't deliberately treat them or not. And, and they just, some of them keep going through. Most of them are blocked by the scar and then they make a new shunt vessel in the retina, which are quite beautiful. It's mm -hmm. amazing how they can remake a blood supply that they go around the scar. Mm -hmm. But we, we would not be deliberately treating vessels ever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I try to, to, to avoid myself to, to, uh, to, to surround the tumor by a, a bigger scar than I, I try to end up with the smallest car as I can. Yes. Uh, but I, I mean, uh, it's another way to to uh, create hypoxia in the tumor is to, 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 to shut up. But shut the, up these vessels. The, the very first use of laser for radioblastoma was um, to cut off the blood supply. Yep. And it's very dramatic. We the cell shrink in the yeah. side of it, and then you, we go in and treat the tumor directly. Yeah. So when I. When I when I the, the, when I tr when I occlude the vessels, it's not the only treatment, of course. Mm -hmm. It's just on top of hypotremia, mm -hmm. because sometimes I've, I it's so white, mm -hmm. so uh, I I'm uh, not sure that uh, the, the real uptake of heat is is uh, high enough to destroy the tumor. I on top of that I destroy the the vessels of the tumor. But it's, it's, it's just on top of something else, because by itself, I will, I will not do the job. So, the indication for me for, to hypertermia is uh, consolidation goes to intravenous or intraarterial for every single tumor that uh, shows a regression type 2 or 3. I want to eliminate all the fish flesh tissue to end up with a scar or a, a calcified tumor. Uh, and of course, uh, it, it's also for salvage therapy, uh, it's also uh, <coughs> provided that the, the relapse is, is amenable, is accessible to that. If it's too, too uh, widespread or too diffuse, you have to, to take another modality. So the, the transcripular diet is, is uh, delivered by this. And one example here, uh, it's an old picture actually, it was a webcam one. <laughs> but uh, this patient had already the other eye removed, or by bilateral case, which is a very young patient, it's a, it was a family case. So he received, so you see the two tumors right here, so he received two shots of intravenous, not the third one, because. Uh, we cannot reduce this tumor any further with the third shot. And here you notice that the small one is much really Not much, do you? Right. There's a different uh, yeah. And then two courses of, uh, of, um, of a regression type 2 and 3, uh, respectively, you see. And then two uh, shots of hypertrophy. Yeah. And you end up with a much smaller uh, diameter uh, of the tumor than. And it was the only eye, and he has normal vision. The full is preserved in this case. So cryo application. So you can do uh, you can destroy directly the tumor with or without conjunctival uh, um, incision. Classic triple freeze and go um, application. 
Myself, I do it mostly for tumor uh, of two mil up to two millimeter thickness and to this diameter there are, you can probably make attempts for slightly bigger tumors, but uh, the, with this one you, you, you should you can usually uh, control them. You use also prior application for the cryo rupture to open the external uh, hematoretal barrier when you uh, prior to IVC effusion, that's a, a pre chemo cryo. And you can also use a cryo uh, as you prepare the bed of irradiation for a, a brachytherapy because you always uh, need like 2 mm margin of LC retina around your, your tumor and uh, due to the, the irradiation dose to this uh, LC retina you may end up with, uh, with uh, radiation induced retinopathy, exudation and, and problems so uh, it's, it's easy to just prepare, if it's peripheral, you do it with cryo, you can do it with a laser if it's more possible. Brachytherapy, so we're almost done. Uh, we use like the cobalt plaques, which are the bidirectional uh, uh, irradiation, but of course we don't use them anymore. We use either the iodine or the ruthenium. We'll come back to the indications. I think there are different indications for these two isotopes. So, which for ruthenium, uh, I use ruthenium mostly for tumors up to 6 mm maximum thickness. Uh, 12 mm diameter would be really the maximum you can treat. And you have different shapes of, of uh, you have this CCX, which is actually 10 mm in diameter or 11 but as an 8 mm uh, active zone, you have the CCY or CCC, uh, it's a 10 mm active zone, 13 mm, etc., up to 20 mm. So, what is very, of course, important is to plaque the tumor on the eye surface uh, to make sure that you have a, a full compact of, of the plaque. <coughs> the slightest the slightest movement uh, will uh, make all your calculation, uh, you know, wrong, as you know, because the, the, the delivery of the radiation will vary as the inverse of the square of the distance. So it's like half millimeter uh, movement uh, from the eye eye wall will uh, result in an underdosage of the tumor. So here's, you can use it as first line, you can use it uh, as first line, typically in such a tumor, a peripheral tumor, easily accessible. So this patient had a unilateral granulobastoma, so no need of chemo at all. Uh, I just control the plaque perioperatively, make sure that I have my 2 mm uh, safety margin around, and you see uh, the regression type. Uh, in this case. Uh, on that case, from the last picture, what would you do next? Yeah, I did just uh, because it was also uh, laser. You on the laser. On the, on the, on the, yeah. To laser to further the, decrease this. The fish flesh. Hypertermia. Hypertermia. To the fish flesh. To the fish flesh. Yeah. Fish flesh, yeah. Exactly. And uh, I did uh, mm -hmm. some laser on the, on the, Is in, the in the bed of the irradiation just to avoid complications mm -hmm. later on. And you see the beauty of ruthenium that you know you, you have really a surgical margin of the radiation that magnetic stuff has here afterwards. Another example of a first line treatment. So it's a complete regression in this case. Salvage treatment, so a scar with a recurrence. Uh, not easy to treat with a laser in my views because you have little uptake of the, of the heat and uh, just one operation and a second to remove the plaque and, and it's done. So what kind of plaque do you use? A routine plaque. Yeah. All what I show here is routine. Yeah. Then I will show uh, for which uh, indication I use I, I do. <coughs> So another, another uh, situation where you have a scar that recurs with several clones of tumors. Uh, within a, a, a 
the scar of the primary tumor close to the, to the optic nerve. And you see, if you apply, this is like uh, nearly 12 millimeters of uh, diameter in total. If you place your plaque correctly, you can treat the whole thing in one operation. And no effects whatsoever. We can calculate with, uh, with the program exactly the dose that is received to the macula, to the foveum, and there is no significant dose uh, to the, the foveum. Here, another case of salvage treatment before. So, this is the typical uh, tumors that resist to cryotherapy. So it, it started, it was a case referred to me that. It, yeah, I was told it started with a little tumor in the periphery, you know, <coughs> a whitish tumor, avascular, cryo, 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 and it didn't stop growing under, under treatment. And honestly, I don't see any other treatment. Even I doubt that, uh, that intraarterial will, will do the job. So it's a perfect indication for, and you see here, totally uh, uh, disintegrated. Another case where you shows that you can also treat focal uh, seeding when the seeding is really uh, located, localized and not diffused and you just have to incorporate the distance of the seeds into your planification and you can control it, uh, these seeds. So now I show you an example where I would choose uh, it was a unilaterally affected patient so we had a normal fellow eye and where this patient had received chemo reduction and uh, then turbo chemotherapy and after a few months recurred. You see there is a recurrence right to the nerve and it's almost uh, covering in part of the optic nerve. If I make a section of this, so this is the limit of the, of the, of the recurrence. Here's a section, the ultrasound section, you, you see it's, uh, the section is like that. So you see the calcification here, then you see the fish flesh <coughs> covering the calcification and the fish flesh touching the disc. So in this case, laser was not effective, it was a reference following laser, I <coughs> We had at the time we had no intra arterial. So it was to be a good indication for the use of IOD. Why? Because uh, if I go back very quickly to this, what you can note is that the isodose of the, the ruthenium, they are flat. What does it mean? It means that laterally, you barely have any irradiation. That's why it's so surgical as, as, a, as the irradiation. It's almost like a proton beam irradiation. It's very uh, sharp, demarcated. And uh, if you take now the, the iodine plaque, you see that the, 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 this is the plaque a notch flat because you cannot approach the optic nerve head closer than this. But you see that the isodose, they are not. You have an isodose that is open. So you have a significant, and you can measure, you can plan, uh, predict what is the lateral dosimetry. So it means that putting the plaque as you see here, the right of the surgery, close to the nerve, you can get <coughs> the, the 50, 50, the 50 gray yes. um, isodose to the optic nerve head, which is exactly what we want. And you can uh, see it's even more of the fiber of the optic nerve before. Now you have a lot of radiation <coughs> outside the tumor as well. Yeah. But it's, you know, uh, this is 30, this is 20, this is 10, so for the nerve, it's no problem for the nerve. It can, can, can stand at 30 or... Okay, but here's the final result. So, of course, it's not a, a real treatment of choice if it's only eye, because you will destroy even more vision. But in this particular eye, it's allowed in, in the area before intra to, to control this tumor. 
but we can imagine something on the other side if there is a, a variant that doesn't allow to capitalize the <coughs> ophthalmic archery or what, what other reason. We, this is an option. Anyway, so I'm done. Thank you.